This is a stamp of Newfoundland that features the Newfoundland dock. The Newfoundland is a large working dock, originally from the island of Newfoundland, which is a part of Canada today, but they used to issue their own stamps. In this video, let's talk about the stamps of Newfoundland. Newfoundland docks were originally used as working docks for fishermen. It is a kind of giant dock that weighs from 55 to 80 kilograms. Can be heavier than an adult. This half cent stamp was issued in 1894, and I got another one with King George VI portrait. This is the date on the stamp, 12th May 1937, which was the coronation day. So this stamp is a commemorative stamp of the coronation with the local element of Newfoundland. From the 14th cent stamp, we can know that Newfoundland was a part of British Empire. Okay, let's talk more about the history of Newfoundland. First, let's look for Newfoundland on the map. It is a large island off the east coast of mainland North America. Indigenous people like the Beothok and Innu were the first inhabitants of Newfoundland. In the 15th century, European explorers began visiting this area. Italian explorer John Combat's 1497 voyage to the coast of North America is considered to be the first journey by which European discovered Newfoundland. From 16th century, fishing vessels with English, French, Portuguese and Spanish crews started visiting the island on a seasonal basis. And suddenly, the Biosoc became extinct as they suffered the infectious diseases carried by the colonists and loss of territory due to French and English settlement. In 1610, the Kingdom of England established a colonial settlement in Newfoundland, and the colony also includes the Labrador area on the mainland. Along with British history, this area later became a colony of Great Britain and then a colony of the UK. Also, the Anglo-French conflict was played out in this region of North America because Labrador and Quebec are bordered by each other. The colony was granted self-governing status in 1854 and became a dominion of British Empire in 1907. But in 1934, due to the economic depression, Newfoundland gave up its self-governing status. In 1949, the dominion voted to join Canada as the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. This island was firstly called Terra Nova by European colonists and it is new land in Latin and Portuguese. And later it was translated to new found land, but pronounced like Newfoundland for some reason. And if I pronounced it wrong, please correct me. And Labrador was named after the Portuguese explorer, Raul Fernandes Labrado, and they changed the way to B for some reason. And when we talk about Labrado, you may think about this Labrador. So that's interesting that when we see a Newfoundland and Labrador can be this one or this. Now let's talk about the stamps and some postal history. The first local postmaster at St. John's was appointed in 1805. Overseas mails were routed via Halifax of Nova Scotia. And in 1840, a regular packet service was established between the two ports. The British General Coast Office controlled the overseas mails, and in 1851, the control of overseas postal service was reverted to the then colony. The first Newfoundland stamps were issued in 1857. On the New Year's Day of 1857, nine stamps were issued, face value from one penny to one shilling. The set of defensive stamps features the royal crown and periodic flowers of the UK. All the stamps have the words St. John's Newfoundland and over the next few years, Newfoundland issued some variations of these stamps. In 1865, Newfoundland adopted the gold standard and introduced the decimal currency. Then the face values of the stamps are in cents and dollars. Also from 1865, Newfoundland started to issue some pictorial defensive stamps featuring the royal family, ships, and local animals such as the Newfoundland dog stamp. 
the first commemorative stamps were issued in 1897 to mark two very important anniversaries. It was Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee and the 400th anniversary of the discovery of Newfoundland. I got one of these stamps, but it looks a little weird. It says 60th year, but with 1497 and 1897 on the tablets. You need some background knowledge to understand this. Queen Victoria's reign came to an end in 1901 with the accession of King Edward VII. During Edward VII's nine-year reign, Newfoundland issued only one postage stamp, features the map of Newfoundland. From the time of George V onwards, Newfoundland stamps began to issue more frequently. There is another Newfoundland box stamp issued in 1932, which I don't have. My favorites are the royal family stamps issued in 1938, King George VI, the same portrait as the ones on British stamps, and Queen Elizabeth, the 12-year-old Princess Elizabeth and uh, Queen Mary, so grandma, parents, and daughter. The last year that Newfoundland issued stamps was 1947. The first one was for the 21st birthday of the princess, when she said, devoted to your service. The last one was for the 450th anniversary of the discovery of Newfoundland. Only postage due stamps were issued in 1948 and 1949, and then they started to use Canadian stamps. Canada also issued Newfoundland and Labrador themed stamps, but that's another story. Of course, Canada issued stamps of Newfoundland dogs. It is a famous dog breed of Canada. And also, in 2008, they issued a, a guide dog themed stamp with Brill. And this should be a Labrador Retriever. From 1857 to 1949, Newfoundland issued around 300 stamps, and now it's a dead country. So, you may collect all the stamps of Newfoundland, but you need a lot of money because some of them are rare. Let's look for stamps from the catalogue. And this is a 2013 catalogue, so the prices are outdated, but we can find some clue. And the most expensive one should be the one shilling stamp issued in 1860 and uh, in catalogue number 15. And 32,000 pounds for an unused one and 10,000 pounds for a used one. But in my experience, and the actual price are always not as expensive as the catalogue price. Okay, eBay. Let's try Newfoundland SG15. Okay, here we are. Not that expensive. And we can see the PTS shield, which means they are reliable dealers. And I have another catalog. You see, a Stanley Gibbons simplified stamp catalog 1946. So when Newfoundland wasn't a dead country. Uh, let's check the press. Uh, it's a little confusing because here they only have two variants of the one shilling stamp, but three here. So, and they must rearrange the catalog numbers. And the number, the old number 17 should be number 23 here. And the old number 9 should be 9 and 15. So we see the price here is 350 pounds for a new one and 65 for a used one. The catalog prices here are in pre-decimal currency. So most of them are in shilling pens, shilling pens, but this one is too expensive. So it's just 350 and 65. But how much is 350 pounds in 1946? Inflation calculator. 65 pounds in 1946. Wow, and how about 350? And that's it. And this is not the only expensive stamp, so I won't collect all the Newfoundland stamps. These are all the Newfoundland stamps I got. I sorted them for this video. And most of these stamps are from a Weaver and a good friend Jake. And, and in his letter, he said, and 
I will enclose a few stamps from Newfoundland that was issued before they became a Canadian province. I've always liked Newfoundland issued stamps. There is usually a lot of nature depicted on them, such as the carbo or fish. I love the stamps too. Thank you so much, Jake. And this is actually a letter of more than one year ago. I should have done this video much earlier. If you collect dead country, uh, animals, royal family, and ships, you can try Newfoundland. A lot of beautiful stamps. And today, Canada still issues stamps of their province, and you can check it out. And before the end, I would like to talk something about the catalogs. Stamp catalogs, such as the Stanley Gibbons ones, are expensive. But if you don't care about the latest catalog prices, you can try to look for some outdated stamp catalogs, uh, especially if you're doing some research of a uh, dead country. I got this one from a stamp shop, and uh, I was lucky that the dealer was so kind, and he gave me this for free. She just said, if you want, you can just take it. And the prices are uh, outdated, but the information is good. It's just quite heavy. You can see the price was almost 80 pounds. Wow. And it's a 2013 catalog, Commonwealth and British Empire stamps from 1840 to 1970. So that's more than enough for my research in Newfoundland. And I got this one from an antique shop. I only paid three pounds for this one, but I really love it. And I'm enjoying checking the prices and of decades ago. They did their best with the limited print technology. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and follow me on social media if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.